Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Bad Times Good Stories Podcast. My name is Joe Flanders, and happy summer. The summer officially started. For those of you listening who uh, are now done with school, I guess summer has started. So I hope it's off to a good start, and you're excited for your break. For those of you listening whose life is in no way affected by the fact that it's summer, and everything goes on as normal... Well, I hope you're having a good day, and hopefully you can wear some shorts. <laughs> God, I miss being at school and actually having summer mean something. I mean, I guess, what, in the summer, you know, music festivals, outdoor movie screenings, baseball games. I guess there's things specifically in the summer for all of us. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Today on the show is Thea Ulrich who's uh, a really fascinating artist and dancer and circus performer. Uh, she kind of does everything. Uh, she's just a really interesting person who I met about a year ago when I was taking improv classes here in L.A. because uh, I don't know if you know, but if you move to L.A., it is required by law that you take improv classes. And so that's how I met her. And uh, I've enjoyed following her adventures on Instagram, and I thought she'd be a great guest. And sure enough, she was. She tells a fascinating, <laughs> fascinating and cringeworthy story uh, of a time that she got a bug stuck in her ear. Needless to say, it was pretty cringeworthy. So she's just led a very interesting life. She ran off and joined the circus when she was 16. She didn't entirely run off. Her parents approved of it. But nevertheless, she was touring around the country at 16, performing on trapeze and all sorts of other things that involve being 40 or 50 feet in the air. So really enjoyed chatting with her about that, as well as the adventure she had getting back to L.A. from New York recently. So really fun episode. If you enjoy this episode, please consider giving five stars on iTunes. As always, you can check out badtimesgoodstoriespod.com, where you can listen to past episodes, check out our merch, and there's a link to my Patreon page, so you can support the show if you want, as it is free to listen to, but not free to make. Thank you so much to those of you who are current patrons. I will be mailing out your rewards here in the next day or two. It really means a lot that you're supporting the show, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. But without further ado, here's my conversation with Thea Ulrich. I've kicked the cigarettes. You know, the next thing is the... Hey, yeah, yeah. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you have, were, ever again, wear the patch when you're mm. quitting, mm. let me know because... I always use my friend's old patches. This sounds gross, but it's, it, and it is, but, um, but, um, uh, they give you crazy dreams. Did you, have you ever worn the patch and have you experienced that? Because they totally do, but I can't wear one new because it will make me sick. Right. Um, oh, you wear just for the crazy dreams. Oh yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like it's hilarious so uh, everyone who knows me knows that like I have batshit dreams anyways mm -hmm. and they're always almost almost always nightmares like my dreams are very fucked up I pretty much have nightmares every night I would um, imagine but then I'm like let's let's get this going <laughs> yeah, I, say, I would imagine I would yeah. imagine night uh, <laughs> dreams about batshit would be nightmares uh, <laughs> 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 Dad joke. <laughs> yeah, bad joke. Bad joke. I said dad. I would never say oh, bad, okay. but yeah. is is dad joke just a nice way of saying bad? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Like they already rhyme. Yeah, like yeah. I think it was set up to just be like, oh, that's cute, but really you should. Did you just you say I made a bad joke? No, no, no I said you made a dad, dad joke. joke. Totally different. Dads are known for telling great jokes, <laughs> after all. <laughs> <laughs> as but, soon as you, you know, spawn offspring, you're funny. It's really how it <laughs> yeah. works. Not before. <laughs> Only if you're male, though, apparently. Right. Yeah. 
When, when you're a woman, then you have to own a van and wear something called mom jeans, which when you're a teenager is cool. And when you're a mom is like basically, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. As a teenager, because you could wear them ironically, I mm-hmm. guess, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. I don't need to wear these mom jeans. Yeah, yeah. But I will because I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. Because then... I have short bangs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 so you use the patch for dreams. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had my first um, gay sex dream the other night. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And How in the it? middle of me, ma- it was good. And in the middle of making out with this beautiful girl, she kind of sat back and was like, hold on, and then died. Cool. And then I realized, see, I told you my dreams are fucked yeah. up. <laughs> then I realized that hours before and hours before we had even met, um, uh, she had taken a bunch of like pills and poison because she wanted to kill herself. And it like kicked in right as uh, we were making out. Wow. And you dreamt that part too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you were there for the poison and then it was no, like, oh, let's No, make out. no. I wasn't I wasn't I didn't know any of that. It was oh. like she died and I found out afterwards. Oh. So, yeah. Well, that's cool that at least your brain gave you like some closure yeah, so, yeah. on this experience. <laughs> yeah. Was it yeah. me? Did I kill her? <laughs> <laughs> Is my kissing that bad? <laughs> so, you just um you just got back to LA, right? Recently, you were in mm-hmm. well, you were in New York. New yeah, York I was in New York. I was in New York. Um, I was in New York for Tribeca. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the production designer on this really awesome VR piece that was. Uh, I say awesome because everyone who worked on it was amazing. It was such an honor to work on it. The piece was itself was a little intense. It's about Syria. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, it was a huge honor to be there. It was uh, uh, a large kind of built out piece, mm. and um, and we actually won the Storyscapes Award. So wow, um, so, what yeah. is that award for? For immersive uh, VR um, kind of new media work. Right on. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. so yeah. So basically, just got back to New York. I love New York City. Probably could never live there because I would just die fast. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, but I love going there to visit. I like randomly. I was walking down the street. Like the first day after finishing this piece, so I was like kind of in a daze because I would been sleeping not at all for over four weeks like right. at that point. <laughs> yeah. And I look up and there's this like like beautiful like you know kind of like little blonde girl walking towards me with her arms outstretched. And I it was this girl that I toured with for two summers in the circus over a decade ago, and we just randomly walked into each other on the street of New York, and she was there with Volta, which is one of Cirque's new shows, uh-huh. um, and. Uh, we, I like saw her. It was amazing. I was, of course, running late to another meeting. And she was like, come to the show tomorrow night. Like, I'll give you two tickets and like get you backstage. And so I was like, yes. So <clears throat> it was filled. I feel like there's like a New York magic. Yes. Whenever yeah. I go there, that shit happens to me. And it's yep. amazing. That's awesome. Was there a struggle getting home? Back to LA uh, from New York? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, actually. Um, so classically, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, it was dramatic, let's just say. I got a bloody nose, which sounds not at all dramatic. I've never had a bloody nose before, though, so okay. that was intense. I have no idea still why I got a bloody nose, <laughs> but um, basically, yeah, that's how that's how much my body was just like ruined by this entire right. Trip. No sleep and yeah, everything just, like, else destroyed. Just, like done. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, so yeah, so I was, I was in the lift going to the airport. I was actually on the phone with one of my friends and then I like got a bloody nose. And so I like start pulling and it's like a lot of blood all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, and I like pull out some napkins and I'm like using the napkins to try to staunch the flow. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do. I've never got a bloody nose before. And my friend's like, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then I start getting a little dizzy and they're like, lie, lie down. So I like lie down the back of this lift and like trying to not get it on the car. Right. You know? Was the driver um, like, ah. Well, then the driver turns down and sees and the driver's deaf. So oh, God. yeah, so Lyft had texted me, um, and I think it's wonderful that they're you know they're like hiring Definitely. you know deaf people. It's awesome, um, and like Lyft had sent me a text before like when like he was coming to pick me up, being like, hey, your driver's deaf, so like if you need to get in touch with them, please text them instead of call, and like allow them to instigate conversation. Right. So so I'm like lying down in the back, and like he sees me, and like then there's no speaking, right? right. And and then he starts like feeling in his pockets and stuff, and I assume he's like looking for another napkin, yeah. and then but after a 
minute, like he pulls out a penny and like gives it to me and like motions me and like it makes it very clear that he wants me to put it on my forehead, okay. like right in between, like um, <clears throat> kind of like third eye, third eye placement of the sure. penny on my forehead. And so I was like, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> so I'm like lying in the back of this lift, like like blood like pouring out of my nose. My friends on the phone being like, what's happening with like yeah. a penny on oh, my your forehead? Phone, your friends still the phone. Yeah, great. yeah, they're just they're in my headphones, <laughs> oh, so they're yeah, just yeah, like yeah. they're now they're just along for the ride. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So. And it was one of those things where it was like, I have no idea what the hell is going on. But I also, it's like, I find it very touching, like folk remedies uh, yeah. or, you know, uh, not even like non-traditional, let's right. say. Yes. Um, uh, I don't think the penny totally has been thinks- accepted by uh, <laughs> modern science <Yeah. laughs> in medicine. Um, but <laughs> So, and you know, I do, I do a lot of like definitely non-Western medicine practices. But yeah. with this, I was like, I have no idea what's going on. But this person believes that this is going to help me. And for that, like, I find that very touching. Sure. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm like lying there with this penny on my head being like, what is happening? Feeling like kind of sick. Also, uh, sadly, I do, I like can't help it, but I get kind of queasy with blood. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's something I feel ridiculous about. I, when alone. I was when I was little, I wanted to be in the CIA, mm-hmm. um, uh, and then I realized that I would be like a super badass, and then there'd be blood, and then I'd faint, and then it all go to shit. So yeah. that's that dream died. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so I'm like lying in the back, like doing my best, and we get the airport. I'm like feeling a little better. I'm like try to get out. He like gets my bags out. I have like so much luggage. It's like so over the top and ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Partially because I was supposed to go to con after try back. Oh, but okay. I was so burnt out from Tribeca, I just like couldn't. I canceled it. So I have like all of this luggage for these trips. I'm standing on the sidewalk being like, I'm okay. Uh, and then just like got really faint and like kind of crouched down there. And like basically after a couple of moments, this like, you know, some random person gives me her water bottle. I start drinking it. I hope I hope <laughs> she was healthy. Like another, another Did you ask for it? Did somebody just No, no, a she's just like she's like, here, have this. It's like, okay, you know, I was like, I guess know, she was like, she I needs it more like, than I do. Yeah, she like yeah. burst out of the lift with just yeah, blood yeah. everywhere, yeah, bags. Yeah. She's like, oh, I yeah. can give her a water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll help. (laughs) So I'm like there with this water bottle. And this other woman, Pat from Minnesota, (laughs) I learned later, um, comes and then basically like helps me with like some of the bags inside because I'm like crouched there because I like just can't walk like steadily enough like with all this stuff. So like helps me inside and is like trying to find me help. Mm -hmm. And we aren't really sure where to go. It is definitely one of those things that like you'd think more people would like do so or like airport people too and like right. you know it's an airport like you know nerves are high often there but girls wander around covered in blood like but no like no one notices no one <laughs> yeah. and uh. until like we like try like go towards a place where people who are older who need like help with like handicap right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go there. Sure. yeah yeah and then this this woman who's working there who's like very kind and she's like a, a older indian woman mm. uh, her english is you know okay, okay. um yeah. but not not all the way there, let's say. <laughs> sure. So don't really know what she's talking about. But she grabs me. She starts. She's like, your blood is too hot. Like, we need to go. And I was like, uh. <laughs> water isn't going to work yeah. for this. <laughs> well, just or, you wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Different, different application of water. Um, uh, she grabs me. I'm worried about my bags. Pat from Minnesota is like, it's cool. I got the bags. And I was like, okay. What a saint this Pat from Minnesota uh, Right? Is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I texted her later. So this woman grabs me and she like, she's like looking for for uh, water. And so we go into the bathroom and like she tests the water. She's like, no, no, that's too hot. And so she takes me on to a drinking fountain. So it's like right in the middle of everything. There are people all around. There's this like big line of people like right next to where the drinking fountain is. Right. And they're all just like staring, being like, what is happening? Yeah. And she just keeps saying to me like, your blood is too hot. Like, and she hot just blood. like forces my head down into the drinking fountain and starts like filling her hands, like cupping right. her hands, filling them with water and like dousing my head with water so i'm just like my visual right now <laughs> is i'm like i'm like an inch away from the drain of this drinking fountain in the middle of terminal four at jfk <laughs> with like water and like blood pouring down my face <laughs> being like i'm being rebaptized yes. in the middle of jfk right now because, but, yeah, like, <laughs> and i was like i don't i almost laughed at that yeah, point because yeah. it was just like so ridiculous and crazy it was, mm-hmm. i was like and my friend is still on the phone They're just like what is <laughs> 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 yeah, 
I, I like that you decided it was not there. It wasn't time to hang up, and she thought, you know, I'm gonna. Yeah, stick I'm with gonna this. just. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't have the mental like acumen at that point, like right. too much blood loss to like be like, too much dizziness because I was like, my feet are feeling prickly. Like, and hopefully, people think you're yeah. crazy than that you're talking to yourself because they don't realize yeah, that you're talking I'm to somebody on the like, phone. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably just. Like, <laughs> yeah. I hope that's there too. It's all levels. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, it just like goes on for a while, and I'm just so wet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like dripping wet. <laughs> And I like try to stand up. I'm like, thank you. I think that's good. I think I'm good now. Um, you know, and um, uh, yeah, so I felt like I did feel like there was kind of a bit of a, a rebaptism, shall we say, that happened there. Another woman comes and is like, is it a bloody nose? She like pushes her finger like into my lips, like above my teeth. There's like, yeah. <laughs> like now you got strangers' yeah, fingers yeah. in your mouth. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, drinking the water. <laughs> eating their fingers accidentally. <laughs> and uh, and so basically, I missed my plane is oh. the, the story. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. God. so Did the water help? It actually did. It did. I feel like, uh, you know, like, can you get faint and you get kind of like a flash of like heat when you're like faint right. and dizzy and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I think it did like kind of like help cool. It's like almost like a compress on your forehead, I think. It's yeah. just like your whole head. And it was very, it had to apparently be very cold. And it was like, she was just going like back and top of head, right. like face in the drain. Just cooling her head down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so you, you know, and, so I missed uh, my flight. <laughs> and I missed my flight because of bloody nose, which makes it sound a lot sadder. But. <laughs> Did you buy Pat from Minnesota a drink? <laughs> I, I, you know, I wanted to pack from Minnesota. I was like, I need to get to my flight oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, I'd been like kind of worried about that. I've been like, if you have to go, go. Yeah. You know, she was like, my bags would be fine, yeah. probably. Yeah. I, I was like so out of it. Yeah. I was not, I was not looking good. So <laughs> it just like wouldn't stop. And right. I didn't know. Yeah. So yeah, no, I was, I did. So I like stayed at like an airport hotel that night and I like called my parents, let them know because they were like, hope that like let us know when you land. Right. So I'm like, so I called them. And my mom was like, you know, the like most people just go to the airport and like get on their plane. Like, really? <laughs> like, it's like, this is so yes, over the top. <laughs> like, You're right. Yeah. I didn't choose for this to happen. <laughs> 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 this wasn't like a avant card art piece. <laughs> now it this is. It's called Bloody Woman in the Airport. <laughs> <laughs> in Terminal 4. <laughs> it is funny that. We all, I think we all do that. There is this certain <laughs> level of like, we're going to battle every time we get on a flight where you have to like <laughs> say, I love you to all your, you know, I your know, parents yeah. or, you know, a significant I other. Know. And then as soon as you lay out, you're like, I survived. I know. Uh, you know, we should really do Are you a good flyer? So when I was little, I totally was totally unaffected. My sister would freak out. We were taking off once and like one of the top like ceiling panels of the plane like fell down. Oh God. <laughs> and she the she like almost died. She like lost her shit. Yeah. So I was totally unaffected. And then randomly a couple of years ago, I started getting like a little weird, like a little like nerve nervy about it. Um, more I think like a lack of, you know, like wanting to trust humans. I think like right. the pilot in Europe, like Dry, like flying into that mountain, I think somehow that maybe like sure. like that like flipped the switch or something. So I am. I always wanted. I always wanted to get a pilot's license, oh, and cool. um, my dad has his, and I still do one day. Yeah. So I think it's more like a, if you put me behind the controls, I'll feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're, you know, no, that's, I totally understand because it is like, it's just the, the feeling of having no control. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've done dozens of like cross country road trips by myself, mm -hmm. which statistically is far more dangerous oh, yeah, than yeah. flying because right, just yeah. every time a semi goes by, it's like if they mm -hmm. sneeze, you could just die. Yeah. But yeah. the feeling that I'm in control, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it helps. Yeah. You it's know? helpful. It's, like, it's oh, one of those swerve. helpful illusions yeah. that we lean on in, in life. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. Because I, I was the same way. I was oblivious. I was oblivious to the my life and my you know dangling <laughs> until I was like in college and I flew to New York from North Carolina and it was just turbulence the whole flight. Yeah, and there was yeah. some little kid in the background just like ah, yeah, exactly. and I just turned. Around, I was like, we could all die. <laughs> you psycho! Stop laughing. <laughs> ah! And uh, yeah, and now I just take like four sleeping pills before I get on a flight. I still don't fall asleep, mm -hmm. but at least it yeah. just numbs me enough that I'm yeah. just like, all right. It's yeah. probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always struggle with that because, like, yes, that is definitely what you should do. But for me, I'm always, I'm always like, you know, if it did go down, I feel like I'd want to like, 
you know, be aware, feel it to the end or something. Yeah. It's like this yeah, like kind yeah. of overly, kind of somewhat like overly romantic. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. And then it makes it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, like, uh, it's the uh, airplane I can, over I can the face sea. This fear. It's very, <laughs> yeah, it's a very sad kind of first world way right. to yeah, face yeah, your yeah. mortality, right. your non likely mortality <laughs> in this but, per- yeah, exactly. particular sense. But, oh, yeah. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> this and, you know, but I will say, I think last year's statistically was the safest air, year of travel ever. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. we're fine. No. <laughs> I was going to a wedding recently, um, not mine. Uh, in Jamaica and I was going with a friend and uh, we were sitting next to each other and he's a great flyer you know uh, his dad had a little prop plane so he he oh, knows yeah. turbulence cause yeah. like, <laughs> and it was it was like three in the morning um, we were flying a red eye from here to Chicago and like I've gotten to the point now like with turbulence like if it's daytime and I can see clouds yeah. that we're flying through yeah, I'm yeah. able to process like oh we're doing this. We're going through clouds, so it's going to yeah, be a little bumpy. Yeah. But like 3 a.m. turbulence yeah. is the worst because you're just like hurtling through darkness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. see anything. Yeah, yeah. And you're just, bah! And yeah. so like, in the, in the, you're like semi out of it from the sleeping pills. Yeah. And you're just like, exactly. yeah. turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally, like without, like we hit a bump and I just grabbed his upper thigh. <laughs> out of terror. And he was sleeping and he just like jolted up. And then he looked at me like a, a father would look at a small child, and he was just like, "Everything will be fine." <laughs> That's Thank good, friends. I need to friend. hear that. That's good, friends. Uh, yeah, and then I just, you know, and then we landed to Chicago, and I was just like, "I'll just, I'm gonna go for a walk. I'll just yeah. leave you alone there because that was that was pretty close to your junk." So uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, yeah. we're just was, gonna cool this. Thought, yeah, let's cool just, this one out. And then it happened again from Chicago to uh, uh, Jamaica. But thankfully, I, <laughs> instead of just going for the armrest that is, yeah, you know, no, there, no. Uh, I, at least I, in my in that split second, I just went knee and grabbed his knee. <laughs> so, you know, progress was yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but, it all hinges on the third time, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. And then the flight's flight back, we're fine. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you, you casually mentioned <laughs> that you knew, that you ran into a girl you knew when you were working in the circus. Uh, Please yes. elaborate, because that sounds <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, ran away and joined the circus, essentially grew up in a small town, didn't like it, felt trapped, figured circus was a good kind of way out of that one. You literally ran Um, away and joined the circus? I mean, that's amazing. I had the support of my parents, although there was a lack of kind of thrill of the, (laughs) about the idea. Um, so it started out like a circus camp and then I, how old were you? Um, 13 when I started, which is a little late. (sighs) actually for Wait, kind of okay. getting um professional uh but um so I started the circus camp went to joanne's fabric bought completely the wrong material drilled a hole in my ceiling like put in an eye bolt hung it up and like would google image tricks and like teach myself fabric um until my parents were finally like i don't think this is going away <laughs> um, right so we found some um coaches that were nearby um and they're actually um uh russian circus coaches who had been with the moscow circus and um actually interestingly with the collapse of the soviet union um a bunch of very high level circus people came over to the states and like are on the east coast randomly so these were some like amazing amazing circus people who were like randomly in burlington vermont and i was gonna um, ask where you were at this point so you were in like okay so you're in like vermont yeah yeah and it just like trained hard happened fast auditioned for this like international teen youth circus and uh amazingly got in even though like video auditions did well personal auditions night before broke my arm oh was my like basically in surgery for the auditions how old were you at this um, point uh 14, 14. i think okay. yeah yeah and, and um, sorry what were you uh <laughs> training to do what did you want to do in the circus Ariel. Okay. So I trapeze. Ariel is my love. Yeah. So okay. trapeze, lira, fabric, um, cradle, single point dance trap, all like kind of anything in the air. And especially if it's a little bit more dancey mm-hmm. um, based, since that was my background. So I also did a contortion act and a hula hoop act. <laughs> I feel like the hula hoop one I was always kind of strong armed into. But um, training hula hoops is also very scary with a Russian coach because if you mess up, it like flies off your hand and will often hit them. Oh. And then it's like, it just, <laughs> yeah, it goes south really fast. So. I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 
Mm. So you got in to like a... Yeah, got into this troupe. And then that kind of like sealed the deal because the next summer I was like touring around New England doing like 80 shows or 70. Yeah. So a bunch of shows with this troupe. And that was amazing. And it was amazing that I got in. It was just one of those things where it's like, you know, kind of like, oh, wow, like you actually don't know what you want as a human and like life like sorts these things out for you and like makes yeah. the kind of crazy things happen. So the person who started this troupe, Rob Merriman, is like an incredible human. He is a mime. He trained with Marcel Morceau for a while. Wow. Um, and he's like an artist and he would actually call me and we would like talk on the phone. I would like, I was, I was, I was like a young, quiet artist, more yeah. quiet at the time. And I would like carve birds in a wood shop with my dad out of wood. <laughs> and so we, cool. I would like talk to him about like wood carving <laughs> and stuff. It's was, it was, it was like kind of very weird when I think back on the, how this happened. And then one night, like he called and like offered me a position on the troupe. And basically some of the coaches who had worked with that circus had worked with me at that point and were like, she, she's good. Like she's ready. Like she should do this. So Still got in, sealed the deal, and then by 16, I was working professionally. Wow. <clears throat> with, what, with what group? The first group I worked with professionally <laughs> was this group called um, The Big Aerial Show, okay. which stood, went up. There's a bridge across connecting them at about 50 feet. They went up to 65, and then on top of one of the trusses was actually a sway pole that was 30 feet. So he, would, he did a sway pole act, and he'd be about 80 feet in the air. And what is a sway pole act? Um, a sway pole, it's a pole that actually is flexible and so can sway and bend oh, back and yeah. forward, okay. like kind yeah. of a big pendulum, mm -hmm. like although opposite. So the top is swaying and he would do like a handstand up there swaying back. He was crazy. Yeah. But like also the most wonderful person. He was hilarious. He's like a genius at Slackwire too. And just like the best mouth ever. He was yeah. so funny. <laughs> <clears throat> he would introduce me as like random names, like whatever he kind of felt like at the time. And also from random places. That yeah. was actually, yeah, it was mostly my name. Sometimes he would change it if he said I was from Russia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Did you develop a then, Russian accent to play along? I mean, yeah, I yeah, like strong like bull, and like uh, is really all <laughs> again circus coaches, um, or like say how to say point your toes in Russian that has stuck with me. So yeah, whenever people, if he had introduced me as Russian and they came up to me after the show to talk to me, I would just be like, thank you. <laughs> And I would just kind of try to look like a little bit haughty. <laughs> and sure. then I feel like it worked. Yeah. I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah, sure. um, I was like, I can't go further than that unless right. I start saying like, like make it strong to these pieces or something. Right. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which would be a weird thing to say to yeah. an audience member after a show. <laughs> but anyway, so that was the show. It was real. I'd never performed outdoors. So I'd mm -hmm. be performing like 40 feet outdoors. And <clears throat> we toured around big like... Midwestern state fairs. Mm -hmm. And that was a crazy experience. Uh, more culture shock, I feel, going to the Midwest than ever um, yeah. traveling anywhere else outside of this Midwestern country. state fairs are oh my God. fascinating. Oh, my God. I grew yeah. up in Ohio, so like the oh, Ohio yeah. State Fair is okay, just, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just fat. What, 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 what was the big culture shock? What was um, Well, I mean, a lot of it was also, you know, when you're traveling somewhere else, you like think it's going to be different. And right. for me... I, I was, you know, I was like, I'm staying in America. This isn't, but it's like, you know, everything is so different and like down to like the way people talk and everything is different. And then also just thinking about all the times that I've, you know, I've lived abroad. I went to public school in Italy when I was younger, like thinking like when I say I'm an American, like I'm also talking about this person. Right. I don't know what this, who this person <laughs> is. Like, yeah, just, what are like, these people just, all like, about? You know, um, but everyone was super nice. <clears throat> of course, you know. Mm -hmm. There were like, you know, and just like these big, strong, like sprawling state fairs. Yeah. Like uh, at the first one I went to, it was in Decoin, Illinois, like okay. deep southern Illinois. Yeah. One of the guys next to us uh, was like a tractor salesman and he would let us drive them and it'd be like a, a huge, like, you know, $200,000 tractor right. and I'd be like driving it being like, this is the most damage I'm going to ever do. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> There was a whip show next to us once and I like made friends with them and like whenever it was like a man and his wife and whenever she was feeling a little sick, I would stand in for her and that's like when you like hold the little piece of paper in your mouth and they like, you know, whip it, oh, wow. like cutting it yeah. and stuff. 
So, but I mean, <laughs> it's just like super, you know, it's such a different culture. There's right. like fried like Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I was like, is that a food or a drink? <laughs> like, I don't even know what that it's is. It's a combination, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Every, um, yeah. every food imaginable is oh, fried. Yeah. We would just bring the people we like, because on the fairgrounds, like everyone, like you would start to know each other. We'd like bring them like whatever. It would yeah. like became a game. Like what weird thing can we bring? <laughs> they just throw it in the fryer. Like whatever, <laughs> apple, sandwich, anything. We'd be like, hey, can you fry this? And they're like, sure. And like toss it in. Probably tasted pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> if you fry yeah. something, yeah, 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 yeah. I've had fried yeah. Oreos, <laughs> Twinkie. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone had a Classic. fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich, yeah, yeah. which was pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're really a beacon of health. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely, fairness. absolutely. Well, I mean, it's just, it's a, like, it's a bizarre experience to be wandering down, like, the Medway, which is the main right. kind of stretch in a state fair, the drag, in, you know, a leotard and tights with your shower <laughs> stuff, like, going to the showers <laughs> with a bunch of people wandering around being like, <laughs> like, that's a weird experience, you know? Imagine, particularly and, for, um, like, what, you were, like, 17 at this point, maybe? I was 16, 16, 16 the first yeah. one. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's so, yeah. what a fascinating experience to have for a teenager. <laughs> like, that's so cool. Yeah. When, when Sam also introduced me, he'd be like, you know, Thea Orridge from, you know, whatever, Milford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. <laughs> or somewhere random, only 16 years old, so don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so then what, flash forward a couple of years, and then when does the, your story take place? Uh, the- <laughs> so story takes place with this show. Okay. And uh, that was the second summer I had okay. done some. So it would be like we'd tour for 10 days, and I'd, you know, go back and tour again. So second summer, it was the last day of the gig, and so we were taking down the the rig mm-hmm. which um is like dangerous and you know you have to do carefully and you know it's a very huge tall big rig yeah. um so it takes a while it's dangerous so we were up until like two th- or so in the morning two three like taking down the rig um had done it gotten all packed up so for leaving in the morning we'd all sat around in the trailer like <clears throat> you know having some whiskey and chatting right um, celebrating yeah, yeah yeah for a little while <clears throat> and um, that is still why I feel that's like where I, my like love of whiskey started. You know, at first, you know, it was like nostalgic, and now so sat around the trailer for a little while, and then all went to bed. Uh-huh. And then so like here's where the story starts. And there's actually two different versions of the times I've told this story. There are two different beginnings, and one, the main one that I told for a while, is a lie. Oh, <laughs> an okay. Untrue beginning. Okay. And it's possible that you know, say my parents ever hear this they yeah. will learn the real beginning <laughs> yeah. for the first time <laughs> i've got an exclusive then yeah yeah and afterwards um, i want to find out why you had a fake beginning maybe it'll oh, become I'll, clear. i'll tell you yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll become clear yeah. so basically the real beginning is there was a juggler on that tour mm-hmm. um and we were having an illicit secret relationship Ooh, okay. <laughs> so the real beginning starts with me in his tent uh-huh. as opposed to me in the trailer <laughs> uh, okay. all right yeah <laughs> so uh, a small change to the story but yeah. like makes it a little more obvious why he like knew what was going on right had this been going on for a while you and the juggler yeah so the first summer there had been you know some tension the thing is is so the first summer i'd been 16 he was 24 it was like well you know it was like okay but a little (laughs) it was like on the edge shall we say again age of consent new hampshire 16 totally cool right so don't freak out everybody but But, yeah cool but frowned upon yeah (laughs) Cool, but not supported. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. So anyways, secret. And then the second, the se- it was like when those things were, and it was, this was before iPhones and stuff. Right. And like, you know, we like went, didn't talk for a year. Next summer, like he and this other person who had actually toured a long time, you know, show up at my house to pick me up to like get in the car and drive for like 48 hours somewhere. Those road trips were super intense. Um, we would just like rotate who was driving. Yeah. That was actually more stories. There's so many janky, like there's like, we had to buy a fire extinguisher once and whoever was in the passenger seat, their job was to just if, if the hood <laughs> <laughs> caught on fire, they had to put it out. It was, so you were driving yeah. a legit car here. You know it's yeah. good when there's yeah. a fear of yeah. fire at all times. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't even a window in the back seat once. So we just had like a piece of cardboard tape there. It was rough. Um, <clears throat> anyways, and then like in the car on the way that gig, like at like hour 20 or something, we like secretly started holding hands. So like... Ooh established it started again so anyways fast forward end of the show end of the tour and i'm in his tent and i like 
have this funny feeling by my like in like kind of by and in my ear. So I like reach my hand up to like go and like kind of like push it or brush it away. Yeah. And I end up pushing an armored beetle into my ear. Oh, um, did you know that at the time that that's what you were doing? No, okay, no, so no, thought, not at oh, all. Oh, this feeling is just love. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it was just like a tickle. I thought yeah. it was like, you know, I thought it was like, you know, a little like a hair or right, something. Right, right, so I was yeah. like trying to kind of brush it oh, away or like get whatever like, you know, hair or something was yeah. in my ear, like just like kind of push it out. Okay. But I end up shoving an armored beetle while it was alive into my ear, oh. which is to this day oh, no. one of the most like kind of excruciatingly painful and loud experiences yeah. I've ever had. And yes, if I like hear like any bug or mosquito by my ear, I could like still kind of freak out because <laughs> it was just so, it was in my ear. So it was like in my head, just like buzzing. And it was like scratching at my ear and my eardrum. So it was like super painful. <laughs> so I push in and then I start freaking out. And I think I managed to say at <laughs> one point to... <laughs> to the juggler uh there's a bug in my ear <laughs> and i hope like the mood was very romantic in the tent oh yeah, yeah very. things were escalating yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah. He, he probably in my head he said something that, sweet and yeah, yeah. sultry yeah. and then you and your reply was there's a bug in my ear <laughs> yeah except for not so calm oh no i'm sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so I'm like free and he like, he's like, okay, oh my God. And I'm like, and things are exclaiming really fast. Cause I'm start, I like try to keep my cool, but like immediately right. I'm freaking out and I just run out of his tent and I like run into the trailer and then start trying to bang my head like sideways oh, and my ear against the, the mattress a la like, this is how my dad taught me how to get water out of my right. ear yeah, when yeah, like yeah, water. So thing. you like bang your head. Yeah. So it's like trying to do that with it, but it like wouldn't come out. And it was just like, it was so, it was just kept scratching and like buzzing. It was I was going like, to say, it might so, be a stupid question, but how did you know instantly that there was a bug? And was it like, yeah, like noise it was, or like clawing? yeah, it was like, like yeah, it was sounded like a bug, except for like a <sighs> hundred times louder. Right. Um, and I brain. could like feel like little like movements, oh, and it God. was scratching against like oh. my ear. Oh. Yeah, it was so yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of like squirmy feelings yeah. in this story. Yeah, <clears throat> so okay. I'm doing that. Yeah, Banging it's not working. Um, oh yeah, I'm only wearing underwear. Otherwise, completely <laughs> naked. So that should just be established. Um, just bottom underwear. Just bottom. Underwear. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, yeah. So I like run out. Michael has gotten the juggler. He's yeah. gotten out of the tent at that point, and he sees me. And luckily, the guy can think fast on his feet. Right. So I'm like, because I am out of my mind at this <laughs> yeah. point. He, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> he grabs me and like drags me over to this hose where this hose was. It's where we had like washed dishes. And sure. stuff and and drags me over this hose like forces me down onto my knees like pull, like grabs my hair and like pulls my head to the side and puts the hose in my ear so like water is going at the ear and he's basically trying to like wash it out or drown yeah, it yeah yeah and so and and that like thus starts like that game which is like i would be there <laughs> like with a hose like kind of coming out of my ear uh, with water and then he would like we would stop for a moment and there would be like a brief beautiful moment of silence right. and then it would start oh. again and I'd be like ah! and he would like push my head aside and do it again <sighs> and then I have like one of the funniest visuals that like I will never be able to forget which is I'm like I'm crouched on the ground basically completely naked yeah. in a puddle of mud at this point <laughs> with like you know this like hose pouring water of my ear and face <laughs> And I'm facing towards where the trailer is. And the middle door of the trailer where Sam's room was, the boss of the show, yeah. bangs open. And he's standing there. And he is a super strong circus man. Yeah. So, like, like standing there with his, like, you know, 24-pack yeah. in his tidy whities <laughs> Like, ready to kill somebody. Right. Because he heard the door bang when I was like running in out of the trailer and me screaming. Right. And he thought someone had like come into the trailer and like kidnapped me. Right. So yeah. he was like, who came into my trailer and took my aerialist? And he was like ready to <laughs> Oh my Kill god! Someone. And was this like fairly late at night too? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is after taking down the rig. Right. Yeah. So yeah. This so is now like late. three in the morning. Oh god. Okay. You know. Right, yeah. Um. So he's standing there, like ready to kill someone, and then he sees what's going on. So he comes over, like Michael, I think, like roughly explains. You know, I'm. I don't even know what's going on by that right. point. And uh, then another of the performers, who we called Iron Mike, like he wanders out, and at some point, finally, like the hose comes away I like sit up and it's quiet and and like there is 
the it is the thing because I didn't know what it was at that point. Right. I just thought it was like some bug or something yeah, yeah. like a you know mosquito or whatever. I had like the thing is dead. Okay. Um, Iron Mike at some point goes and gets a blanket, wraps around me. So I'm like wrapped in this. (laughs) I'm now like more covered. (laughs) There definitely been a moment where all three of them were like standing around while I'm like screaming in a puddle (laughs) of mud (laughs) naked. Um, So (laughs) that happened. But circus folk, you know, where it's all, you know. So now I'm like wrapped in a blanket. We go in the trailer. We're sitting down. I'm like heavily traumatized and yeah. also like we're all like this is so crazy um yes. and we we're like well what should we do because like is it out of her ear like right. it's now dead but like it did it out. wash out and we we're like okay well we should probably go to the er just to check and make sure there wasn't any like damage to the ear right. or anything so we go and find a hospital like some podunk hospital <laughs> somewhere sure <laughs> a late night yeah late on, yeah exactly go in and like try to explain to these people <laughs> which is <laughs> not great <laughs> like, <laughs> like well we're like in the circus we like took down this rig and and so da, da, and like you know and and then like this bug and of course the story at that point is you know i had told all of them i'd been in the trailer when this right. happened right. um yeah and then of course i'm 16 so they're like we have to call our parents and they call my parents and they're like hi we have your daughter here in the emergency room and like yeah right and it's like i am like touring away with the circus right, right now like right, they terrified. do his takedown night yeah like Maybe michael lunges she's fine yeah exactly michael lunges towards the phone being like being like she does very dangerous things like tell them she's okay yeah, exactly. you know so my parents have a casual like heart attack probably yeah. over on the other end of the phone the people look at my ear and they're like huh like you have a bunch of beeswax in there but like you know otherwise it's fine and so i was like okay well like yeah they're like yeah um and so i was like okay well that's fine like my ear felt funny but it just like been attacked by by a bug and like had like a bunch of water poured into it and so i was like okay so ultimately everything supposedly is fine yeah so uh we like head home like i'll sleep for two hours and then you know next day wake up my ears still feeling funny but we all like you know get in our various like the various different vehicles that are going different places uh the trailer runs on veggie by the way which oh. is always fun we would like go around the 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 kind of different circus places and like, or like uh like the stalls at mm. the restaurants and stuff to like get oil for it Oh, wow, um, that's pretty cool. And, um, yeah, and, uh, like, do the long kind of epic drive home. Yeah. So I get home. Luckily, like, a day or two later, I just had a regular kind of physical that right. had already been scheduled. So I go to the hospital. Like, you're still feeling kind of funny. Go to the hospital. At the end of the appointment, I say to the doctor, I'm like, oh, hey, I guess it must not have been physical because they would have checked my ears by that point. Right. But it was something. Some kind of check up or something. And I'm like, hey, so this thing happened a couple days ago. My ear still f- feels kind of funny. Like, can you, like, Maybe do you want to like look at it and make sure it's okay? So she looks at me and she's like, the the bug is still in there. Oh <laughs> God. So I'd gone around for like two days with a <sighs> dead armored beetle in my ear. <sighs> and this freaking hospital, they're like, oh, you have some earwax. Yeah, you're fine. Hey, <laughs> be on your way. Oh my God. So she has to send me to like uh, another part of the hospital and they have to like suction it out of my ear and they do it and then they give it to me in like this little jar and it's like it is a like armored like beetle like it is a big one of those I think like one of those like kind of Japanese armored beetles <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really horrifying. <clears throat> so I took that home and promptly my father took photos of it and sent it to our insurance company and was like, we are not paying for that emergency room visit because yeah. <laughs> they did jack shit. <laughs> exactly. All they did was terrify us <laughs> yeah. and send her on her way. <laughs> so, so yeah, that is the story of getting a new beetle in my ear. I know. Not particularly of consequence, but I am curious was the- was this night with the juggler the first time that you guys were actually acting <laughs> on your feelings? Um, because that would be yeah, a real that, bummer. That, that, that would be a real bummer. Um, yeah, it was not. It okay, was not. Okay. However, it was supposed to be like the last night that we were going to see each other right. for many months because that was the last tour of the season too. Right. Yeah. So it's possibly many months or a year. Like we didn't mm-hmm. know when we were going to yeah, see so each other again. Yeah, we would have a nice again. romantic yeah. evening together. And the- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you go back to that company the next year? Um, actually, uh, I went to college at 17. So that okay. fall, I, I went to college. And yeah. and then, yeah. And then by then, like, by the next summer, I was kind of off doing interny the ship things. So, right. so yeah. Was that, have but, you worked at a circus since then? 
I have done a number of like professional, like kind of corporate gigs, oh, cool. one-off gigs, stuff like that. Yeah. And I've coached at some circus camps, mm. but I haven't toured again. I definitely, I really miss touring. Well, because so. you, you kind of have your hands in a lot of different areas, right? Like mm-hmm. you do a lot of different art. and Yeah. So, I mean, the decision, so I went to RISD, which is an art school. The decision with RISD was more like, well, here I can, it's not an end of doing circus. Here is where I can learn to be my own director, create my yeah. own show and not just yeah. be a puppet and someone else's show so that's kind of always been the idea of just basically like i want to be able to inhabit a world and space that i create or Mm. i have say in yeah and um like be able to do things that way so my kind of insistence on that is you know maybe who knows who knows say if it's good or bad or anything but that's definitely kind of been the defining thing down to even like i design and like will even weld my own kind of aerial apparatuses and stuff that i perform on so that's um, pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's definitely, it's kind of morphed into like, I love circus and doing it. And I, I just like love the idea of being able to kind of create it, bring it to kind of a new level, bring it more into like an artistic, maybe experimental world in sense, you know, mm-hmm. Cirque, Cirque is like de Soleil is very beautiful and everything, but of course at its heart, like it is, you know, it's, it's a business right. and like you get put into an act and you do that act until your body <laughs> breaks Says, down no. and, yeah. then, and then you're done. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I guess like, like wanting to see how kind of more uh, kind of artistic from music, fine art kind of production design stuff yeah. can like be brought maybe around that. Mm. It's like an interesting thing though, because at a certain point, like circus is a lot about tricks. Right. Right. And that's yeah. where it's how it's not dance. Right. You know, because you do tricks and dance, dance is like movement. And so, like, I've had actually some really interesting conversations with some other circus friends about this. One who uh, did just did, he like was a huge part of doing the music for the SpongeBob Broadway show, which oh, cool. I saw was in New York and it was so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But, um, where like if circus it becomes not about like you don't have to get the trick because right. if it's like part of a larger storyline you can't just like keep trying for the trick like the rule in circus is you get three tries to do the trick mm-hmm. and otherwise then you have to move on right. but at which point like at what point you sacrifice the completion of the trick is like it's an interesting thing That's it's kind of a funny yeah. thing for the circus world so mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i'm curious just about like the because how long would you be at a state fair, like when you were doing this? Like how long would you be at one site before you moved on? It would it usually be, yeah, it would vary depending on the fair. But it'd usually be like between like nine to 12 days, I think. So you probably like, did you kind of, is is in a way, is that nine to 12 days sort of like summer camp in the sense that like you forge relationships very quickly? I just, the carny world sort of fascinates me. Like, yeah. I'm sure you just you met all sorts of interesting characters. Mm-hmm. There were definitely, it was a lot of meeting interesting, interesting people and like definitely a lot of like ending up with interesting, fun, weird stories. Mm. Definitely like mm-hmm. the troop that I was with at, at the time, they're always usually with this, this group um, that we're mainly talking about. There was like a couple of the core main people and then it would be like one or two new people every time. Mm-hmm. For me, I was the head aerialist and I had two solo aerial acts. One was a bit over four minutes and one was like almost seven minutes Wow! Okay. Um, that I was doing every day at about like, I would be slightly raised and lowers, but it'd be, you know, anywhere from kind of 30 to like 45 feet in the air. Um, most places we did two shows a day. So that's mm. four acts a day. And then on weekends we did three shows a day. Mm. There was one place that was three shows a day all the way through. And like the fact that I was able to, that's like six solo aerial acts high up in the air every day. So there was definitely a lot of like, I had to, like, I woke up in the morning, I would immediately like, you know, I'd have some of like whatever breakfast you know right. usually iron might cook to like prepared i would go stretch so it was like it was, there was like a lot of heavy work it was a regimented it. day yeah yeah for a lot so of with the whole like after a show sometimes we you know hang out in the trailer and drink whiskey it was more like i would take a sip of whiskey and like <laughs> otherwise not drink anything right. because i was a uh, very intense like we're an aerialist working incredibly intensely right. so so yeah. yeah so like but definitely wandering around um I would always be given lots of weird free food. <clears throat> so there was always a joke like Sam would be like, I'm hungry, like Thea, like go for a walk. <laughs> so, 
I'd come back carrying like some weird like nacho-y fry thing <laughs> right. smothered yeah. in something. <laughs> Sauce, yeah. butter, and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Being like, how could you possibly eat this and then do a handstand swing back and forth at 80 feet in the air? Like, how does that make sense, Sam? <laughs> So. Wow. That just, yeah, that's a pretty cool experience yeah. for a teenager to have. Definitely. A friend um, on one of the earlier ones, um, a friend of mine who she's now actually, she has a really beautiful solo act with Cirque. She's touring with them right now. She and I, we like, I th- the tractor guy, the first one, we like did a whole photo shoot like, on the <laughs> on tractors. The tractor. Yeah. So it was like us doing like handstands and splits <laughs> and stuff like on these big tractors. So we'd always like do like silly things like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a uh, pretty incredible story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess like I honestly don't know if there hadn't been a hose or like Michael hadn't thought of it. I like have no idea what would have happened but so to all of you out there if this ever happens to you that actually does work for making it stop although probably it will still be in there so just a little do you still have the beetle pro tip i i don't know i know like (laughs) i like my dad likes like took it and like maybe like hoarded it away somewhere but yeah (laughs) at this point you know it totally would be something that like that that shit's being cast in resin and becoming a necklace right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, tell me about your necklace. Like, well, just you wait. <laughs> You're never going to want to eat again or go camping. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what are you working on now? Is there anything um, in, the, in the pipeline? Yeah, uh, a bunch of exciting things. Um, I'm trying to see if I can possibly figure out a way to end up having a warehouse out here, basically like warehouse creative space, Mm -hmm. aerial space, art space, maybe build out a psych wall for shoots and stuff. So working on kind of like trying to line that up, doing more uh, work in the VR world, which is really exciting. And um, I never thought I would work in the VR world and I never knew much about it. But basically the way that this team is approaching VR is that everything that you see in the virtual world, you can reach out and touch. And it's so it's open air audio. So you aren't wearing headphones. Um, there's like 4D effects. So it makes it all like actually very real. Yeah. And as someone who's a performer and like has a strong relationship with my body and everything, I've always like kind of been afraid of the idea of VR of like you right. like glue a phone to your face and sit on a sofa. Right. Um, but um, but kind of the idea of creating immersive experiences where like you're actually can be yourself and you're exploring around a world, learning about it for yourself and like learning about yourself too, hopefully. So doing a lot more, uh, hopefully, in that world, you know. I think it's definitely, um, like, you know, the future, I guess, you know. To what degree, I don't, I don't know. Scarily. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I'm, like, so, I feel so ambivalent about this world that I'm, like, now yeah, surprisingly somehow working in. <laughs> um, it's, like, kind of hilarious. Um, but, I mean, if it is the future, which it seems plenty of people do think, like, maybe trying to be on, like, the creative design end yeah. of that. Like, maybe, who knows? Who knows? Definitely. I mean, it's um, definitely a forward-thinking so, notion to, like, in front of it but definitely still doing a lot of kind of like performance art Mm -hmm. um which involves aerial and like building stuff out and (laughs) And where can uh people follow your adventures on the instagram Um, so at thea ulrich is my instagram otherwise like thea ulrich is usually how i am online although Mm -hmm. dorothea ulrich is where my website is and Mm -hmm. like dorotheaulrich.com and that is in desperate need of updating. And also, please don't go to any that say Thea Ulrich because those are like the ones from college that I need to delete that are really embarrassing. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go do yeah, that. No, that. Yeah, please, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> so, um, All right. It's a great Instagram page to follow because you're always doing something really interesting. <laughs> and uh, I enjoy following your exploits, uh, well, your adventures. You, yeah, you too. You too. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, and, uh, thank you for having me. This was awesome. It's <laughs> good. always good to sit down and talk about past trauma, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> that thankfully you're able to laugh about now. <laughs> Did always. that stick with you at all? Just as we're wrapping up, like just like the weeks afterward, like were, did you were you ever like, ah, there's a bug in my ear? Um, it didn't like flashback, but you still even to this day yeah. of like if like there is, you know, a bug like flies by your ear, yeah. um, if it I'll, I'll like kind of freak out and people are like, uh Thea, it's okay. Like yeah. it's like a mosquito. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Like that sound <laughs> yeah. is like such a trigger. It's gotta be. <laughs> oh. Well, hopefully the bugs stay away and uh you know, 
things keep going great. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, you know, that's like a bumper sticker. Right? Yeah. Oh, the bug's away and things are great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that was the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I am still freaking out about the, I'm going to wake up and there's going to be a beetle in my ear. That is <laughs> terrifying. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us five stars on iTunes. Uh, like the podcast, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, share it with your frenemies. Just get the word out there. I'm excited to continue to grow this thing, and uh, that really starts with you guys. So thank you for supporting the show, however you choose to do that. And if it's just by continuing to listen and saying, fuck you, Joe, I'm not going to do anything else, but I will listen, well, that's cool, too. If you had a bad time that would make a great story, feel free to email it to me at bad times good stories podcast at gmail.com i'll give it a look and may read it on the air uh tell me if you're liking the show if you're disliking the show what you're getting into this summer uh what do people do in the summer clearly i don't know based on my intro check out bad times good stories pod.com merch past episodes patreon support all that good stuff thank you for tuning in and until next wednesday keep laughing